I'm joined by Sendra C.C. Mazik, Army Paratrooper, Disabled Veteran, DAV member, Freedom Award winner at the National Disabled Veterans Winter Sports Clinic and the Paralympian. And to that list of accolades, she recently added Disability Ambassador for Inclusion in Space Travel. And she joined 11 other disabled participants in a zero gravity flight at 32,000 feet as part of the Astro Access Initiative. That involves scientists and engineers with experiences in places that you might have heard of like NASA and SpaceX. Uh, the flight was the first in a series of experiments aimed at understanding how spacesuits and space vessels can be made more accessible. CC, thank you for joining me. This sounds like a thrilling adventure and it sounds like uh, it was just a, a good time, but it was more than just a good time, right? It was a very in-depth project that, that took place. It started months ago, is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. First of all, thank you for having me. Um, and thank you for allowing me to take this flight once in a lifetime ordeal for me. Uh, yeah, it started months ago at MIT, where a bunch of scientists and students uh, were coming up with futuristic things that we could do to make space accessible for the disabled. That sounds like a big project, a huge project to make, you know, I think about space and I think about infinity, right? To make space accessible. What were some of the things that, that the group, that you as a group looked at? All 12 ambassadors, you guys met virtually, uh, you talked with through things with these scientists, they were asking you questions about your experiences. Um, how, how, what are some ways that space can become more accessible? Well, I know for number one, we have to do the retrofitting of the aircraft, especially for the deaf, the blind, um, we, we do. And that's what some of the things at MIT that we were discussing like beacon noises so they can know where to be and um, uh, just different things like that, you know, that we brainstorm on in even our flight suits. Maybe we can have something that's retrofitted in our flight suits to have them different for the different disability group so they can know um, where they are so they can be oriented on the aircraft. And the, the thing is about Astro Access as well too, we want to be independent when we're taking these flights. So the more we take these flights and the more we have retrofitted things on the aircraft, to get us acclimated, then the more independent we will be during the flight. It sounds amazing. And since we're talking about the flight, uh, to tell me about it. I, you know, all I understand is that uh, the nickname of this aircraft, or at, at least in some circles, is called the Vomit Comet. Uh, it, <laughs> it goes, uh, you know, you're essentially going up and down, up and down, and 32,000 feet. I don't know if that's the bottom or the top, but, uh, and it simulates gra uh, no gravity, right? Yes. What's that so like? We, uh, amazing. I'm going to say we did 15 parabolas, and that's when you go up and down. Um, to me, it went by too quickly. Uh, two to three minutes at zero G, floating in the air, um, and trying to perform different activities because different disability groups have a different type of... Um, I guess, activity that we had to perform, basically. And so we would do that. And um, it was just amazing. I, I really didn't perform all of my tasks. I kind of was trying to get myself in control because I don't know if I'm a controlling person or what, because I wanted to do everything correct. I wanted to show them to my skills um, on the aircraft, even though I've never float light as a feather, but I just wanted to show them that I had some control, which I did have a little bit control. Um, I have, of course, more flight time than the 12 combat, the uh, 12 ambassadors because of me being a paratrooper and things like that. But um, it's hard. I'm gonna say that it's hard being weightlessness and you're floating. Um, I did several like backflips and things like that. And I had to stop. I said, let me stop before I get sick. You know, I have to show and prove. I have to show up the 82nd Airborne in the uh, disabled vets. I was like, I will not puke. I will not puke. I will not get nauseous. No, 
It so, was not the um, vomit comment for not the vomit comment for season. Not the vomit thing. comment for me. Yeah. No, awesome. no. So twelve parallel is is, is uh, well fifteen. We did fifteen up and down. And you know what? The thing is, I don't know if people understand this. Of course, you know you're floating. But when you're not floating, what do you think is happening when you're not floating? Um, I, I didn't realize that you were going to ask me questions. I'm not prepared for this, Cece. Tell me what happens when you're not floating. <laughs> Basically, we had yoga mats for every single ambassadors. And we were sectioned off in the plane. We had the blind. We had the deaf. Then we had the mobility, which I fell into the mobility. And all of us had yoga mats. So the thing was, when we were not floating and we were down, they wanted us to reach that yoga mat. And when we reach that yoga mat, it's kind of like we're stuck to it. Have you ever witnessed the, it's a like a fair ride, the Gravitron, when you're just going around and you're stuck to the pad, that's how we were. It was like you going from zero gravity to super gravity. Absolutely. And I tried to like lift my head up and try to do a push up and try to be strong about it was not happening. Was not happening. No, not yes. one push up. That is, that's amazing. I, I have to ask because you did mention the, the, the paratrooper and I mentioned it in your intro. Uh -huh. um, were, were you, I mean, I can imagine it sounds thrilling what you did. Um, but thrilling to me is, uh, you know, I go on a little bit of turbulence on a jet <laughs> aircraft and I'm panicking and praying. Uh, were you afraid at all? Not at all. I was not afraid. The thing, I, I was shocked that I was not afraid. You know, Rob, I, um, I had more butterflies in my stomach when I used to jump out of airplanes. When I was about to jump, I had butterflies out the yang yang, but this right here, I had none whatsoever. Not a one. I was even dozing off on the flight. <laughs> that sounds like a movie where someone's getting ready to get dropped into combat and they're sleeping. That's how relaxed you were. <laughs> but it was the best experience ever. I would do it over and over and over again. I really want, and I believe. I believe in this, um, this company, Astro Access. I am so proud of the things that they're doing in reference to making space for everyone. I, I just love that and including the disability group because we have so many disabled individuals that are interested in going to space and taking parabolic flights that they have been turned down because of their disability. So this company right here is to show and prove that we are and we need to be included. And I'm so proud of the work that they are doing to show and prove that we can do anything that we put our mind to. Now I was getting ready to ask you what you wanted uh, your fellow disabled veterans to take away from this experience, but it sounded like you just told me you, you feel like there's a lot to prove, right? Yes. Yes. We can do anything we put our minds to. And this, with this opportunity, I see for myself, I'm more interested in space. I'm interested in going to space. This is something that I have added that I've never imagined that would happen. I would sit on my back porch and look at the stars and, you know, just wonder what's up there. And now we're taking this flight. Like, I really want to go up there to see. I want to experience out of Earth a suborbital flight in an orbital flight. I do, I wanna experience that. I wanna see how it looks. I wanna see how it feels so I can come back and share. And every disabled individual, we can do this. If we have our supporters, if we believe in ourselves and keep doing the research. Cece, I, I have a feeling one of these days, I'm gonna be sitting on another one of these Zoom calls with you. Uh, talking to you after you got done uh, actually flying in space. Uh, just 
this sounds tremendous. You're, as always, um, a tremendous spirit, uh, an inspirational human being, and a great uh, ambassador for DAV. Thank you so much uh, for, for having the courage and the bravery to get up there and do what a lot of people wouldn't uh, on the Vomit Comet. And uh, thank you for taking the time to join me today. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, DAV, for all you do for me. I really appreciate it.